What are the criteria for married men in fasting? Can she have me even when I break my fast in the evening? Or I sh- should until the number of days are off? For us to have a clear answer from the Word of God. I'm going to read uh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, from verse 1 up to verse 5. It is especially in the uh, in the last two verses that I want us to to concentrate, but we can take into account the whole passage. And I'm going to read from the Amplified Version and the passage of Scripture I'm going to send to you after recording this audio. It says, Now as to the matters of which you wrote, so evidently they asked some questions, uh, so this 1 Corinthians chapter 7 is as a result of the questions they, they wrote to the Apostle Paul or the issues that they raised to the uh, Apostle Paul and he wrote this chapter as well as other chapters in answer to the issues that they had raised or certain issues that he knew were taking place in that church. Now as to the matters of which you wrote, it is good, open brackets, beneficial advantages, close brackets, for a man not to touch a woman, uh, in brackets, outside marriage, 2, verse 2, but because of, in brackets, the temptation to participate in sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife and let each woman have her own husband. Verse 3, the husband must fulfill his marital duty to his wife with goodwill and kindness, and likewise the wife to her husband. Verse 4, the wife does not have exclusive authority over her own body, but the husband shares with her, and likewise the husband does not have exclusive authority over his body, but the wife shares with him. Verse 5, do not deprive each other of marital rights, referring to conjugal rights, except perhaps by mutual consent for a time, so that you may devote yourselves unhindered to prayer. But come together again so that Satan would not tempt you to sin because of your lack of self-control. So I believe that the key to your question is found in verse 5. It says, do not deprive each other of marital rights, except perhaps by mutual consent for a time, so that you devote yourselves unhindered to prayer. So the key uh, is that the apostle is telling us that for us married people, it is wrong for any one of us to to deprive the other part of their are marital rights, what are called marital rights. In this amplified version of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, uh, uh, meaning uh, conjugal rights. And uh, there is an exception. It says, except perhaps by mutual consent for a time. So if you are to fast, say for three days or for seven days, the best way to do it as a married man, uh, and that applies for a married woman as well, is by mutual consent. You don't make an individual decision when you are married to fast, because your spouse may not be fasting. If your f- spouse is not fasting or does not have the same pattern to fast, and you are fasting and they need a uh, their sexual rights or their marital rights 
to be fulfilled how will they be fulfilled when you are actually praying and fasting uh, my understanding of verse 5 uh, seems to imply that when we commit ourselves to uh, or devote ourselves unhindered to prayer it particularly zeroes in on the subject of fasting where we seclude ourselves to the almighty God in order to seek the presence of God by depriving ourselves of food and as well as other things that we ordinarily enjoy for which is not a sin for us to enjoy uh, I don't see how fasting can be really fasting if people are meeting in the evening to have sexual intercourse because uh, in my view uh, sexual intercourse is, is virtually at par with eating food so I know someone will argue that but in the evening you would have broken the fast but the truth of the matter is that the fast as an activity wouldn't have been really broken. You would be just eating to sustain the pot. The fast becomes really broken when you have ended the fast, like the entire period of fasting. That's when we can say uh, fasting has been really broken uh, or has been broken. Uh, that uh, practice of eating food in the evening in order to sustain your physical body so that you are able to go about your activities. Uh, it's not really breaking the fast in the strictest sense like you have discontinued the fast. The only valid grounds for engaging in sexual intercourse for a married person after fasting, uh, and this is my humble view, it's when the fast is discontinued, it can be resumed maybe a day or so immediately afterwards by mutual consent. But to, uh, to me, a situation where someone is doing a seven-day fast every day in the evening, they are meeting as husband and wife, uh, I wouldn't look, that, look at that as fasting. We don't have a biblical precedent of anyone ever doing such a thing. And uh, I don't think it would be fasting for someone to abstain from food and then uh, to be fully engaged in sexual activity. So, because of this 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5, especially when read from the Amplified Version, it is important for any married person to seek the consent of their partner when they are engaging in a fast. Because fasting can open an avenue for the devil to destroy the marriage. Because if the needs of one of the parties are no longer being met because the other part of the marriage is always unavailable, seeking God, praying, wailing, crying, uh, you know, rolling on the ground, supplicating before God. When the other part, uh, you know, to divorce the subject from even sexual activity, when the other part is always, uh, when the other part is interested in having a uh, a night out or an evening out or a meal at the local restaurant breakfast at the local restaurant and the husband or the wife is not available because they are in the prayer closet crying out to God it causes all sorts of problems in the marriage in other words for married people if you are to fast when your your loved one is not fasting make sure that you have got explicit con consent from them they must explicitly say yes and you must not force them to say yes because if you force your wife or a wife forces her husband compares her husband either psychologically or verbally or through other means through disparaging through saying words which look make the other person who doesn't feel pertinent to fast, look and spiritual. The other part will say, yes, you can go ahead with your, with your fast. But guess what? It will open, open very serious avenues for temptation. And the, the marriage can actually begin to crumble in a fast. Don't forget that 
uh, when Jesus Christ was fasting, that's when the devil decided to attack him at the end of his fast. So, when you fast, if you check one of my teachings on fasting, I'm doing a series on principles of fasting. And uh, I shared on the spiritual dangers of fasting. I, the first part I shared on the a physical or natural dangers of fasting to, to our physical anatomy or physical bodies uh, and also to uh, us psychological that that is the physical aspect of our being and then in the second installment of the series i shared on the spiritual pitfalls of fasting and uh, i believe in that edition i also mentioned that if fasting is not properly executed with explicit con consent from between marital partners, it can actually destroy a marriage. There are so many homes which have been undermined by fasting, and sometimes even by prayer, where one party goes to extremes and is always praying, always crying out to God, and the other part is now lonely. Uh, the whole reason why people marry is because they want company, they want communion, they want someone to fellowship with, someone to share live streams with, someone to work with, someone to plan with. So if the other part is always praying and is no longer available for socialization and fellowship, then the marriage does not make sense at the end of the day. So these are things that I just wanted to, to take into account. Uh, the other principle that I want to read, which uh, on the surface does not appear to be uh, really uh, related to fasting, is found in the book of Amos. It is found in the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 3. It says, Do two men walk together unless they have made an appointment? Do two men walk together unless they've made an appointment? I just want to read it in the NIV. In the NIV, it says, Do two walk together unless they've agreed to do so? Do two walk together unless they've agreed to do so? And then in the New Living Translation, it says, Can two walk together without agreeing on the direction? Can two walk together uh, without agreeing on the direction? So this thing of fasting, it can actually be counterproductive if the direction of the fast, the duration of the fast, and all other nitty gritties are not agreed upon. Uh, you have got one party deciding spontaneously that they are going to fast for 60 days. When the other party is interested in fasting for six days, you are hated for trample because the part that stops fasting earlier would want to resume the normal routine of life. And the, the normal routine of life involves eating and drinking, it involves going out, it involves spending quality time as husband and wife or as a family. But the normal routine of fasting involves a lot of prayer, a lot of reading of the word of God, a lot of intercession, a lot of waiting upon God, a lot of meditation, seeking the face of God, seeking the presence of God. And this consumes a lot of time, which would otherwise be also used, part of it at least, to, to, to fellowship and consolidate the marriage. So these are things that need to be taken into account. A marriage, a brother Perez indeed, can collapse, I mean to say. A, a, a marriage can easily collapse. So that lady who is in your life, she did not marry you in your capacity as an evangelist or as a man of court or as a preacher. She married a man, a male human being. What she needs is a man. And uh, you and your loved one are very young. Uh, that, that, that girl that you married, she's a very young lady. Uh, she, she, she has uh, expressed exclusive devotion to you. She wants your company, she wants your fellowship. So uh, this thing of fasting, it must be done in moderation. Don't, don't engage in elongated fasting as yet. There is no scripture in the Bible which uh, tells us that when you fast, you are going to receive more power from God, uh, unless if God commands it. And there is no scripture which says when you fast, you are going to be more spiritual than those who are not fasting. 
It's just a belief which is prevalent among us in Pentecostal and prophetic circles. But the truth of the matter is that uh, fasting is good as a spiritual discipline. But if we have got other people in our lives, we must take into account their needs because it's we who brought them into our lives. I, it's me who brought my wife into my life. I'm the one who brought my children into my life by marrying my wife and producing children. So uh, it's not a crime for them to be in my life. I brought them into my life, of course, with the help of God, for them to help me, to assist me to achieve my dreams. So my plans going forward and my activities must take into account their existence. I must not act like I'm still single. And in the same vein, you, Evangelist Perez D, you must not be an evangelist through and through and you are no longer a husband, you are no longer a loved one for your wife. Have times to joke with your loved one, have times to play games with your loved one, have times to find out her character, have times to cook for her, have times to go and go to the florist shop when she's resting or cleaning or doing some other chores. You go to the florist shop, you buy a rose for her, uh, be romantic, be a husband. Don't be a, a, a continual prayer machine which is always belting out prayers. A marriage is good for you to sing hymns and to be preaching together on Facebook and doing all of that stuff. But yeah, a marriage is not a church. A marriage is it's a relationship between a man and a woman. It is primarily a relationship between a man and a woman. And one of the reasons why marriages of Christians collapse it's because they are so unrealistic. People will be appearing, praying together, appearing, uh, singing together. I'm not saying there is anything wrong with praying together or singing together. It's good. But when it is overdone and we, we ignore other aspects of life, other natural and mundane aspects of life, at a certain point, these things, they start getting boring. They start getting boring. Learn each other's personalities. Joke clean jokes which don't violate the word of God. Have games that you play. They can be card games, they can be phone games, they, they can be games where you are doing role play or even games which are play based on scripture. Do storytelling. Ask the Holy Spirit to assist you to be creative in making your relationship exciting because uh, since you just married recently, you are still Perez and uh, 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 Alia, you see. So for you to become one uh, brother Perez and and sister Alia and uh, that uh, couple must be produced, that couple must be produced, the, the family must be produced. And uh, believe you me, brother Perez and it's hard, detailed, delicate, and systematic work. You work on a marriage for it to, 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 to be something which is alive and kicking. A marriage does not occur on its own. And marriage is not spending time together or sleeping together. It's something which you build on a daily basis. Uh, consciously and unconsciously, you have to build a marriage. So this thing of prayer, it must be done, but with balance. Uh, the problem with us Christians is that we do good things without balance and then they end up being bad. So I believe with these few words you have been assisted. I've tried by all means to share uh, from all angles the basic principles uh, of uh, fasting. Uh, fasting, the key is that when we get an unction from God to fast, in most cases because God is aware of the people who are in our lives, God is aware that Perez and D is now a married man. He leaves it up to you uh, to determine when to start the fast and um, uh, how to do the fast. Uh, at the early stages of our marriage, I used to do my fast to co coincide with the uh, time of the month. I'm speaking in paraphrase because I don't know who listened to this audio. Uh, uh, I, I used to do my, my fast to coincide with uh, uh, my loved one's time of the month so that uh, the consent will be just automatic, you see. So uh, that's one piece of wisdom that I can share with you. 
but uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be always coinciding with that. Sometimes God may prompt you to fast at any other time. Just to make sure you get the consent of your loved one and vice versa that she gets your consent when she's engaging in a fast. Thank you so much. May God bless you.